So today I would like to talk about buy to let basic um, for property investing because I had some questions recently again um, people asking me what are the basic what are the important things you need to look for or you need to, you need to watch out for um, when you're doing a buy to let so let before we go forward we need to know what buy to let is um, uh, what the definition is basically I know we most of us have heard about it there's so many different type of buy to let but I just want to give you an overview of what it is basically buy to let is when and an investor or someone who's looking to buy buy an investment, buy a property. It could be one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, or ten bedroom, whatever it is. And then you rent that property out to a family um, that would live in that sort of property. So that's what we call buy to let. And it's normally a single let. You sing sell it, you 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 um, let it out to um, one family. Or if you're doing it in a different way, you could do it as a um, HMO or things like that. But that is a different sort of. Um, uh, um, uh, definition altogether. So in a nutshell, it's a property that you could buy and rent out to um, individuals. So when we're buying properties, there's so many ways we need to look at it. So we need to look at it in different perspectives. So the advantage of buying properties is if you're buying a property that worth 100,000, really, even if you've got the 100,000, you don't have to put down the 100,000. You need to use something that we call leverage. Leverage is taking advantage of other people's money. Right. Um, one example could be the bank. Basically, the bank can lend you 75 percent of the value of the house that you're buying. If that property worth 100,000, the bank will lend you 75,000 of that property. The reason why they do that is because it's a safer investment to them because they know if you default on the payment, they've got a hundred thousand pounds property. And at the same time, it's an advantage for you because you don't want to put down the whole hundred thousand pounds because obviously it would be not waste of money, but it was, it would be not, not leveraging enough. And then so what you could do then you could actually ask the bank to lend you that amount of money. And then obviously you then pay interest on that loan. But I need to talk about a bit about, about that. So what does the bank look for? People on law usually talk about it. There's something we call coverage, right? Coverage is very important. Coverage is the amount of money the bank will look for in terms of rental income for them to be able to approve the mortgage. Suppose we have a property that we're renting for £600 and our mortgage is £500 it means we are able to pay our mortgage and plus and hundred pounds extra. So in the mortgage or the banker's point of view, that is 120% leverage basically, meaning you are able to pay um, your mortgage back once you've received your rent. Uh, i.e. this is one of the, this is one of the main things that, that they look at after looking at your own financial situation. Right. In most cases, banks look at the coverage more than the financial situation. If the property can look after itself, right, the bank may be willing to actually lend you the money regardless what your salary is. Because I had so many people ringing me, asking me, oh, I'm on £18,000, I'm on £17,000, or I'm on £30,000, can I get a mortgage, a buy-to-let mortgage? Of course, you can get a buy-to-let mortgage because what the bank looks at, they look at your income, right and they've got the they look at the rental income that property is potentially going to generate based on the fair market value so once the pro once the bank look at that uh, on that side of thing they will then be able to lend that money on that basis so don't worry about oh you're not earning enough money or you're not actually um uh, sure whether you're going to take that money or not so you're going to take that loan or not so it, it works regardless of what's your salary although if your salary is lower you you you, you get less exposure in the market say if you're on seventeen thousand pounds or sixteen thousand pounds a year you get a less exposure to the market but there are banks out there that can lend you the 75 percent Right. And also you could use other people's money. Say you had you wanted to buy a property that worth hundred thousand pounds, but you don't have the you don't have the twenty five thousand twenty five thousand pounds. You could ask family and friends to actually lend you that money to buy that property. Then obviously they will charge you interest for that and then you use that money to actually buy it. And just back on onto the leverage for you to be able to understand, for you to ensure that you're safe in your calculations in terms of the rental income, you could actually calculate your interest payment based on four to five percent. I normally do five percent because five percent is it, it protects you. 
right? 5% interest protected. I know the interest rate is norm is right now is very, very low. It's between 2 to 3%. But if anything goes wrong, anything goes bad, you know you are well protected. And the bank usually look at 120. Um, 100, you used to use, you used to look at 125%, but now they've upped that up to um, 130 just so that they, um, they um, protect themselves. Um, but however, because of the section 224, if you, most investors are buying properties now on, uh, um, uh, section 24, as a result of section 24, um, um, investors or landlords are now buying property on the company name because that then protects them in terms of getting the interest to be, t t to, to be tax deductible, right? So, so again, coming back to the coverage, you need to make sure that the property can rent above the mortgage. You always have to be above above the mortgage. You know, I'm not talking about by fifty pounds or thirty pounds. It has to be over hundred pounds or three hundred pounds in my case, because you want to make sure it's actually um, uh, beneficial or profitable when you buy this property. So leverage is very very key. I'll give you I'll I'll give you a perfect a, a simple example. Yes, suppose you're buying a property that worth eighty thousand pounds, right? And uh, you were you 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 actually put in now twenty thousand pounds, which is the deposit, and then and then the sixty thousand pounds would be what you put down to actually buy the house, right? <clears throat> suppose your your um, rental income is 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 five hundred pounds. If you times that by twelve, that gives you six hundred pounds annual um, rental income. So your loan. In that case, if the loan is if the loan if the loan was sixty thousand, so five percent interest on a sixty thousand pounds loan that will be three thousand pounds. Again, you can see then your rental income, which is six thousand pounds, less your actual interest is three thousand, but that gives you three thousand pounds net pro net profit. So your rental coverage is about you need to make it be about two hundred two hundred percent just to make sure that you know exactly um, uh, whether it it it. It, um, it's, it's good or bad, you can still be able to pay your mortgage and your rent always covers your mortgage anyways. So now, let's now talk about how you buy a property, okay? There are three fundamental concepts of buying a property, which I would go into. Uh, one, you need to be buying property below market value right and uh, um, I, properties that you could add value to opportunity to add value to and capital growth so i'm going to go in in depth with these three so below market value i know the market is really 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 intense right now you don't have to have 25 percent below market or 30 percent below market value if you're buying an if you're buying eighty thousand pounds property and you're able to secure that property at seventy thousand pounds or seventy five thousand pounds you still got a discount in that deal right but we have to analyze that deal to ensure the, the actual market price is a fair market value price all right on that basis if even if you've got five thousand pounds it adds up right uh after 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 a year or two so as long as you get a discount is very important because you you buy and wait in properties you don't wait and buy okay you have to buy you have to start making money in day one you make money when you buy the property not when you sell it so or not when hoping that property prices would go up so it's always important to get a discount when you're buying the um, property, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be 25% below market value or 30% or 50% below market value. As long as you've got discount, genuinely discounted property is still a good buy because you are there for the long term. You're not there for a year or two. You're there for like five, 10, 20 or some people, some, in some, in some people, 30 years. So, so again, that's what you need to wear. That's what you need to think about especially when it comes to buying properties, okay? And the second one is opportunity to add value. It's absolutely um, important for you to know that you're buying properties that you could add value to. Maybe it could be to do with a new kitchen, you know, painting and decorating or doing a renovation, stuff like that. But if you're adding value, say you bought a property at 80,000 and you added a value to, to, to that property, maybe by having a kitchen or an extension, stuff like that, that property may appreciate in value uh, once you finish the work about 120,000 pounds or so. Right. So if you, if you bought, bought it at eighty thousand pounds and it worth hundred twenty thousand pounds, you would have made about forty thousand pounds capital appreciation, which is in a which is a good position to be in if you are a property investor. So always always look for properties that that could add value, and without not just adding value to those properties, you need to work out where cash flow correct like what we've just done you have to work out the 130 percent leverage you have to make sure your 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 rental 
income is 130 percent over your mortgage interest right that that way you know you are covered but i like to do five percent make sure your mortgage interest the way you calculate it is five percent not a two percent three 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 percent or two point five percent it needs to be at that le level to actually reinvent your um, uh, income and the third thing you need to look for is capital growth we need to buy properties where there's demand right you don't want to buy a property in a village where they've only only 50 people and they're and they're not employers you want to buy a property where there are lots of people and there are lots of employers in the area right that way your property prices would go up naturally right in average property prices double every 10 years right in average property prices goes up by 7.5 percent every year again if you're buying properties in these sort of areas you will make a lot more capital appreciation and again when you buy a property first day is always the best year right say for example we bought that property at eighty thousand pounds we've done all the works in that worth hundred and forty thousand pounds or hundred and twenty thousand pounds for example you can know that you've added you've you appreciated you, you added value of forty thousand pounds so if you'd collected rent let's say six hundred pounds or something like that you would have collected a net profit of about one thousand eight hundred pounds every year so if you remortgage that property after you've done all the works that property would have worth worth um, additional value of forty thousand pounds, which is the eighty thousand minus the hundred twenty, which gives you the forty thousand pounds plus the one thousand eight hundred you would have earned as a net profit onto the um, actual deal. Again, you can see you you've made lots of money in that junk. But again, in the following year or two years after you're going to after after, after or when you're going to remortgage, that property will not only worth hundred and hundred and twenty thousand anymore. It worth maybe 126,000 pounds or 100 and whatever the, the capital appreciation was. Again, you get your mortgage based on that value. So again, every two, three years, you're able to pull investment out from your property to either like spend it on, on yourself or to invest elsewhere. So you make money in two ways. You make money on the capital appreciation as well as the cash flow. So that is very important for you to understand that because that 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 would help you immensely when it comes to uh, making your de decision to uh, buy properties or not. Again, key factors to think about, basic factors, very important factors you need to think about when you're buying a property is one, you need to be buying those properties below market value, right? It has to be below market value, right? Again, you need to know whether it's a real below market value or if it's or, or, or not. So if you buy below market value when property prices goes up or when you're ready to remortgage after after that, you make a bit money out, out of it. The second one is opportunity to add value, right? Can you reform that property? Can you change the carpet, change, change, change the kitchen, up, upgrade the bathroom, stuff like that? Or could have an extension or you want to change it use from a C3 to C4. And again, that's another sort of video I would do on that. So C3 is when you have a house as a family house, you wanted to change it to, to um, CC4 into say multi where you rent the property in room by room basis. Maybe you can convert a three bedroom house into four or five bedrooms um, where which you would then let in, in room by room basis. So see if there's a potential to actually do that. If you've got that potential in that property and it ticks all those boxes, you could actually convert it into a HMO or a multi let property that would ge generate you a lot more cash flow. Right, it will generate you a lot more cash flow, and then that would put you in a better in a better position when it comes to re remortgage. And the third final factor is capital growth. Right, the property needs to be in a demanded area. It needs to be in a demand. You need to buy the property where you know people are buying properties. There's so much um sort of attraction in that area, like so many employers, good secondary schools, very close to the city center, stuff like that. That then increases the, um, the demand of the property and again that property would let throughout the year you will never have it vacant because there will always be demand um, for that property again these are the key rules or basic rules you need to look for before you even start looking at these properties okay you need to know what your coverage your coverage always needs to be more than your mortgage don't go buy property blind, okay? These are the things you you um, need to look for. Again, if you like this video and you think it's been helpful, um, I'd love to hear your comment. Uh, you can send me a message as well if you want me to talk about any other topic because this was asked by um, one of the members in, in the group asking what are the basic things someone needs to look at um, when it comes to real estate investment or property investing. So if you have any of those questions 
or, or, or you, or you have a burning question that you want to ask me. Well, you could, you, you could send me a Facebook message straight away, or you could comment on this video, um, thread here, or actually you, you, you could call the office and you could ask for me if I'm in the office. I may be able to give you 25 to, um, 30 minutes, um, of my time to, um, help, um, answer some of your questions. But, and, and again, if, if you're looking to sell, buy properties or looking for below market deals, Again, let us know. We do have them coming in every single week. We've got below market deals. And so, so if you're interested in, in that sort of thing, do not hesitate to contact us. Comment on the link below or send me a, a Facebook message. We will put it in our list to, um, to, to send you below market value. And again, if you're buying properties in Cardiff or, or Newport area or anywhere below, um, um, like 10 to 15 mile radius really, really from Cardiff, May I have my letting agency who may be, who, who would manage that property for you should you need to manage or looking for a tenant? We may, we will be able to help you get tenant as well in those, um, to, um, rent your property out. Okay. And, uh, and also, um, I've got my free investment property investment crash course every month. Interested in that? I will leave the link, um, on this, um, thread again. Join me there. Um, it's a free course. Um, there, there is one pound commitment fee just to ensure that you're there. So you're not gonna, um, just book it in and then you then end up um, uh, actually stopping other people from booking it because we have limited number of people to um, take um, per um, crash course. So um, if you're interested in that, click on the link below. You could um, to um, enroll, enroll yourself. And again, if you have any questions, do not hes hesitate to ask those questions. And again, thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to, to seeing you next week.